Hi, and I want to give a warm Texas welcome to my new subscriber. He's the fifth one on the Classless Aggie channel, and he subscribed yesterday, which is a 20% increase. I've gone from four to five. I know there's a lot more interest out there than that, but it's always nice to get a new subscriber, so it motivated me to post something since I haven't posted anything in a while. I just wanted to go over a little bit about what's gone on the last couple of years and how the classlessness that the Aggies exude has gone from being a bad joke and just among the fans and the core who chase cheerleaders around on the field all the way up into the far reaches of the administration in the athletic department with Ross Bjork, Bjork however you say his name. It's Jork or Bjork, but it should be Bjork because he's a jerk. So what's happened is this, and most of you already know, is that Texas is moving to the SEC next year. But what was going on a couple of years ago when they announced two summers ago that they were applying and moving along with Oklahoma to the SEC, a few things happened. And that was mostly that Texas A&M tried to block Texas and Oklahoma from coming in to the SEC. It was a pretty well-known fact, and they tried their darndest to do it, but at the end of the day, the only other team they could get to vote with them was the ball team of Missouri. So they didn't have enough votes to keep Texas and Oklahoma out. So eventually they folded and voted to let Texas in simply because of the fact that if they had voted against it, they would have made themselves look bad, not knowing that they always make themselves look bad. Even over the last couple of years with their $100 million man, who couldn't even get the bowl eligible last year with the best recruiting class of all time. Can you imagine that? Here you've got a guy who's now in his sixth season that they paid $100 million to, and he still has not gotten them anything. And he ended up with a 10-year, $7 million a year contract originally, and then they boosted it a couple of years ago because on the COVID-shortened season, Texas A&M finished number four in the country. But they played less games, and half the teams they played during the regular season on that COVID-shortened year were 500 or below teams. So all the Aggies got really excited and started shit started saying that they own the state and that Texas was a little brother now. But of course, two years later, after two years of not going to bowl games, one of them because Jimbo claimed uh, two years ago, or almost three now, because of COVID, they didn't have enough players. And last year, obviously, they went five and seven. Um, so they haven't been bowl eligible, but they claim they own the state and they were big brother now, which obviously is not true. They uh, pretty much ended up owing the state money, and they're so bad they aren't, aren't even little brother anymore, they're probably little sister, period. But I just wanted to say something about what's also happened over the past few months, six months, whatever it is. So Ross Bjork, the athletic director at Texas A&M, threw a hissy fit and kept saying, when Texas came to the SEC, the first game would be in College Station. Now there's a couple of problems with that, and we'll go over that in a second. I'll grant Texas A&M, yeah, they were there first. They went, were SEC bound, but they also left the Big 12. A lot of that was due to the fact that they could never beat Texas. They only beat Texas 37 times out of 118 tries and over 118 or 118 times in 118 years. So that's a 313 record against your biggest rival, which is pretty bad. That's less than a third. That's, that means you were winning maybe one out of three times. But the bigger problem is this. Is the last game that Texas and Texas A&M played was in 2011 in College Station. So that's one reason you play the first game in Texas, at Texas, at DKR. 
The second reason is because in the history of the rivalry, which obviously they didn't really care about history because they got punk so many times, but in the history of the rivalry, even numbered years were in Austin and odd numbered years were in College Station. 2024 is going to be an even numbered year. So there's two strikes against them for doing this period. But Bajork complained so much and whined so much that the first game will be in College Station. For a school like Texas A&M that claims they're so rich in history and tradition, that's kind of funny that they're doing this, but when have they ever not done things like this? So at the end of the day, Texas A&M left for the SEC, made no attempt to keep the rivalry going, even though Texas was willing, though the Aggies will tell you among all their fairy tales that they did want to keep it going and that Texas did not. But that's kind of like when they left for the SEC, how they put two fake national championships and a couple of fake Big 12 championships up on Kyle Field wall to beef up their resume and only got laughed at. So no matter how much they claim they're into tradition, they've proven that unless it benefits them, toss tradition out the window. So that was my little rant for today about Texas A&M. I hope you enjoy it. I'm glad the rivalry is back, no doubt, even if it has to be this way. But at the end of the day, the Aggies have proven over and over again, and even with this, how classless they are and what crybabies they are. <laughs>